All right, today we're gonna to take a look at the Focus Odin 3D printer. So on paper, the Focus is really looking good. It has a direct drive extruder, dual Z access, it has a carbon crystalline plate, they say it's new. It uses the Marlin open source firmware, and we all like open source. It has a 32-bit motherboard inside, a 235 by 235 by 250 build volume, and is 95% pre-assembled. We really just have to fold this gantry up. So let's unbox this thing, take a look. And in taking a look at this, I'm gonna be coming at it from the perspective of 3D printing not being my main hobby. So with quadcopters, 3D printing is kind of a part of it, but I don't wanna make it my full day job trying to make a 3D printer work. So hopefully with all these great features it has, hopefully the focus will produce well. I'm sure there's gonna be little things along the way. I'm sure it's not gonna be absolute perfection, but uh, you know, for the 250 to $350 range, uh, let's see what the Focus pr can produce and uh, you know how easy this can be uh, to add 3D printing to your arsenal of tools on the bench. All right, so let's get into this thing. It's like on mine, the plate was shift it over a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these clips off to, so I can take this plate off so it can slide through. There we go. Put that off to the side for now. And then uh, here's the first major feature of this thing is that you can just set it up and there's really not too much to install Put together and install there's some screws there in the back so we'll go ahead and do that so if i pull this up let's get this gantry installed so what i do need to do is grab a couple of these screws it's like the bearing is like loose in that thing the back one's tight these three are not so you got to make sure to turn take off that bottom plate because you have to remove some stuff so I don't want to get this to fall. Look at my lovely desk. It's so nice and clean. Okay. So let's keep working through this. What we want to do here is install this ribbon cable. So you just push that in there. And then this one got to kind of feed out and then pull this brown piece up right here. Hopefully you can see that. And then you got to feed this ribbon into it and then push that brown piece down and that should get you what you need there. Let's check out the quick start guide. Uh, I need to put this together so that was straightforward. Looks like on this side just turn it a little bit halfway something like that. We have these T screws, T nuts. So we're gonna use those and put the filament holder on. Put it through here first. I kind of gotta put them in there. Twist it a little bit. Okay, so now we're tightening up the different uh, nuts and whatnot. These, but they're basically moving back and forth. See how this is kind of like loose? We don't want that. So the next step is going to be to work to tighten that up. There we go. Go back and forth. Not have any play. Now the same thing needs to occur down here, right here, right on top of these roller wheels. There's one here and one here. We're gonna have to go ahead and righty tighty lefty loosey. That would be righty tighty is this way. And the same thing here. Actually, tighten this. 
to tighten the belt. So this tightens the belt. There's also a way to tighten this belt up here that this is on. Oh, we'll see how she prints. I think this is pretty good. It's pretty tight. All right, the next thing is going to be bed leveling. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and start working on bed leveling. Before we get to that though, I think what I'm gonna do is take this acrylic off because I don't, I would think, oh, see now, look at that. That is not good. Those, uh, the wheels inside there, the bearings are not like tight inside the, in the wheel there, so I'll have to probably take them out and maybe put some super glue on there. Let's see how the whole bed moves. That's like major no no. Now I'm pulling on it pretty tight to pull this up, but still, that would screw up a bed leveling like crazy, huh? plate back on. Now what I've heard with these as well is you don't want to finger print the plate a lot so just keep a light touch on it. If you angle them from the top and rotate them down then they don't scratch the bed. The other thing I've read on here uh, is that you want to tighten up uh, the hot end on this. So to do that, we're gonna take off these, this fan here. And you shouldn't have to do this, but people were having some trouble, so we might as well do it. So that's what those were. Those were some additional hot ends. These uh, were just <clears throat> some pieces here. These are some additional hot ends. Yeah, so there's a set screw. You can see in this hole here, there's a set screw in there and you wanna just make sure that that is good and tight. Some folks were having some issues where the, this hot end assembly, like this whole assembly here was pushing out down uh, because the direct drive extruder was, you know, this wasn't tight enough and it was pushing it down. Now mine is really tight. So that might've been something early on that's now fixed up, but uh, so yeah. Don't pay attention to that. Here we go. I also didn't cover, I put these caps on, those come in the box, you just kind of put them on there. All right, um, I'm going to fix these up. So I'm gonna take some epoxy, put it into here, and then, I don't know if you can see that, but there's hopefully C in there, yeah. There's some bearings there and these sit inside of them, but they're loose. So I'm gonna epoxy these and then put them, slide them onto that bearing and let it uh, cure overnight. Other than these being loose and you probably some, I'm gonna do, I don't have any CA glue handy. You could probably just super glue them or CA glue them. Yeah, went together pretty easy. I did start it up real quick, moved it around, everything works okay. Okay, so what I did to fix up these rollers, which were loose, as I had talked about before, is I, uh, see, they would slide back and forth, now they do not, is I just applied some epoxy inside the roller and then slipped it onto the, to the bearings there. So if you are sliding it off, do it from the back, because uh, in the back here, and you have enough space that you'll be able to get it back onto the rails. But with that, you can see now I have in here the plates on. I then tighten these screws again down in here, that one and that one so there's no wiggle on the plate. You don't have any wiggle back and forth. You don't have any wiggle up and down anymore because now those are on there tight. Put these back on. I want to make sure there's no wiggle here, that that tightening uh, was good so there's no wiggle there. And then just in general, I mean, uh, I, you know, if I'm moving this thing, I'm moving the whole gantry, so obviously there's gonna be some uh, play there, but there's there's no wiggle. Obviously these screws really hold this this in on the y-axis and uh, Just everything's nice and tight. So with that I'm gonna Go ahead and power it on And then the first thing I would do is just go to home so go to 
the tools screen right here and then go to the home and then you can just home everything and what that should do is it should get the positioning of everything based on the sensors so it went over to the left here and based on a sensor this went back all the way and there's a, a pressure switch in the back there that with the one screw hit so you can actually hear it click so that lets it know it's all the way in the back where it's supposed to be and then the gantry is now going to come down and then there's a sensor right here that's going to detect when this is all the way down and that will home it to know just its x y and z uh, positions for it and you can listen how quiet the stepper motors are you know you didn't hear them all you hear is the fan in the unit down here right now. Uh, we do have a fan over here that's, that's blowing. This fan is supposedly fairly loud, but uh, the motors are definitely quiet on this thing. After that's done, you can go into move, and then you can move things around. You can adjust you know, one millimeter increments to, to 0.1 millimeter increments, to one meter, millimeter increments, to 10 millimeter increments, and that will work now that everything's homed uh, you can see here it, it needs to you need to do the home first or you won't get the full movement out of this the other thing you can do of course is go to leveling and we will do that in the next piece so we'll just go ahead and hit level here and that will move everything to the appropriate position We're ready to bring up the bed uh, to do the leveling so we will just bring this up you bring this up until you can slide a little piece of paper in between there and the nozzle and it's fairly slightly grips it and then you go to the next so I can hit the next portion and you can see it's going to move to the next area and do the same thing again anyways I'll go grab a piece of paper and take care of that alrighty so this is after loading the filament uh, which is pretty straightforward you just cut it up clip it at a little bit of an angle put it in and hit uh, over here you hit auto load on the very first screen that comes up and uh, then we just open the file, the test file, and run, and you can see she is printing away. You can hear the people were saying this fan is super loud. I don't, this is all very quiet to me. I don't know. I mean, there's some noise on the fan, but it's not. I would say my computer, my laptop, when it is running, you know, full bore and doing some video editing or whatever and it's really working hard about the same level that you'd hear from my laptop is what I hear there like when you when your laptop is at full bore fan most of the time when your laptop's running the fans off but uh, you know when you're really making it work that's about what that sounds like all right so now we're printing the boat see how that looks the boats coming along overhang looks real good real smooth all right, and there, almost done. What are we at? 75% complete. We're at an hour and almost 40 minutes right now. Too hot. Too hot. Too hot. Too hot. Not quite a great idea to do for print quality, but yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, it's looking good. The overlap in the front, I think, is looking pretty sharp. Real smooth. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased so far with how this print quality is coming out. Not that I'm some sort of expert, but it looks pretty good to me, I think. Okay, so let's check out the print quality from the prints that I have. So here's the cube. You can kind of see, hopefully you can see that. There's a couple ripples on the back side. I don't know if you're supposed to have those or not. But other than that, you can see there's a little bit of ripple there. That one looks straight as an arrow. A little bit of ripples there. So I don't know if that's a little bit of ripple is supposed to be there or not. The F looks good, for the, I guess for focus. And we got the boat. So the boat, we were talking about the front and the overhang and the overlap. Looks real good to me. 
And then here is always the tricky part where it has to complete the arch on top. So it looks like it did fairly good there. Obviously there's some straggler stuff you'd have to uh, clip out or just take a little file and file out. Because uh, it's, you know, there's no supports there, so it's completing that arch and then it has to go around the top to make this roof, which is kind of amazing you can do that to begin with. So it kind of builds its way up the roof that direction. The slope on this roof is I think it's what makes it possible. So that's how that looks. And I also did the owl. So just a little blemish on the nose. You can see all the detail in the wood grain there. So it's gotten that. It looks pretty good. So there's your owl. And then the owl with the top hat, um, same deal. Just a little blemish on the nose there. The rest of it's, I think it looks pretty good. I don't know, not a print expert by any means, but, uh, but yeah. The other thing with Focus is they have a very active Facebook group. Uh, this lady on here, Dora Ding, she uh, is a part of their support team. So if you ever have any issues, you just give Dora a ring. I've seen on here, witnessed on here, her jumping in with people, uh, questions, comments, concerns, or anything they need, she'll jump in right away and try to help them out. You can see right here. For example, like the bearing thing that I had or anything else, I didn't see the bearing thing on any other reviews that I kind of check out. And so it might be an isolated issue, but if you would have that problem or a problem with anything else, just reach out to Dora and she will take care of you. For example, I have six uh, new bearings and a new glass plate uh, coming my way. Uh, I passed it on to her and uh, again, she'll take care of you if she's taking care of me. Uh, obviously there's Thingiverse, but they all have their own library of online parts as well and contests and giveaways and stuff like that. Right now, Focus is running a sale, so you can pick up this printer for around uh, $250, $275, something like that. The normal price I'm seeing in some other spots is around $350, so depends on where you get in, where sale, and you know, maybe anywhere, again, from $250 to $350, uh, you can pick up this printer. If you have any questions, put them down below. There'll also be a link down in the video description for this printer if you're interested in that. It does support the channel. Thanks, everybody. Hope this helped.